of you will, um, some of, m most of you probably will, actually I did, used to go by a uh, YouTube name, Separate as Destroyers, where I did, I saw a video, collecting videos, well, basically a summary before I actually get into the haul is I'm not doing that channel anymore, all videos basically are going to be done here on the podcast channel because, you know, through her imagine between two channels, I'll provide more details on Facebook in a couple of days because after our live show this Saturday, I'm going to be posting some of our plans of my personal plans, going to be doing a whole lot of that basically, um, but just want to give you a quick summary at the start of this video so you know what to expect after the live show this Saturday, but as I said, this is actually my Christmas haul video, so I might as well show you some stuff, so uh, the reason I said part one is because you may have noticed on that previous channel I mentioned, Separate the Destroyers, is, you know, usually I get presents from my mum's side of the family and then from my dad's, dad's part of the family is usually uh, the part two, um, so this is ma mostly my mum's side of the family. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple of collectibles. I didn't really get that many collectibles, but that's also mostly that side of the family. I did get a couple of really cool Lego sets though. Got the Lego Star Wars Marseille Cantina, which was a part of the Summer Wave this year, I believe. I wanted to say it was part of the Summer Wave. It is a really nice set, and I believe of all the Summer sets, it's the one that comes with the most minifigures, but considering three of them are the same, I get three Biffs, which is pretty good. I'm not sure if they've ever released Biff minifigures before. I don't think they have. Um, I'll need to research it if I review it. That's another thing, like... Reviews are going to be done on the channel as well, and I think, you know, podcast listeners will enjoy listening to re reviews, and, yeah, so, and, like, not really getting that many views on Separate Destroyers anymore anyway, so, might as well ch have a change of scenery, but, this is the Moss Eisley Cantina set, it is really cool, it's, I wouldn't say it's a very big set, it's more that the box is really wide, you know, rather than this actually being huge, I mean, it is definitely big, but, well, it's not one of the hugest sets of the wave, but still a very nice set, and I can't wait to build and review it. The other set I got, which is considerably smaller, was one of the battle packs released this year. I already had um, the two prequel ones that were released this year, the Kashyyyk and Utapau Troopers. Um, this was the only other battle pack released this year, I believe. With the Death Star Troopers, which is very nice, get a couple of very cool Death Star Gunners, two really cool Imperial Royal Guards. Um, Royal Guard, the Royal Guards, I believe, have only really been released in expensive sets up until now. I know they've been released in a few sets, but not very cheap ones like those, so you know, it's good to finally have a chance to get them cheap. Rather than having to buy a big set to get one or two of them. That's really, uh, for this part one anyway, the only collectibles I got, um, which it's fine because I still got some really good stuff. <laughs> um, got three DVDs which are pretty cool. First one is the Amazing Spider-Man 2 DVD which looking forward to watching. Yeah, very nice DVD. That's just one of them. I also got Doctor Who The Day of the Doctor. Um, just quite, you know, coincidental that I got this as a gift today considering, you know, um, with today being the Doctor Who Christmas special, I know this is the 50th anniversary special rather than the last year's Christmas one, but it's still very coincidental in a way. Um, and lastly, and I know, <laughs> when I say this, simply it's going to be sacrilege to some people and they'll probably want to stop listening, but I've never seen Lord of the Rings, so... <laughs> you know, getting a DVD set with all three of them, you know, makes it, makes it considerably easier to watch them, I'll say that. So when I find a time to do so, I definitely plan to watch all three of them. I, mean, I actually, I kind of lied, I did watch them before, I just never really got into them, but I was like that for a lot of movies and TV shows back in the day, and now I like a lot more, so I'm sure I'll get into them this time. Um, Go divide the next uh, things that I've prepared my whole video into two sections, which is books. I've got Star Wars books and non-Star Wars books, basically. Starting with the Star Wars books, got Tarkin, one of the new ones, I believe it was only released last month, November, and it's, I've already started reading it, and on chapter 3 already is a really good book, and um, so far, 
I'm sure it keeps up the good pace, but Tarkin, you know, he's always, he's been such a complex character in Star Wars, you know, not necessarily a main character per se, more a supporting character, but he's always been one of the more interesting ones, I feel, you know, he's kind of one of those characters you love to hate, and he's so complex, you know, he's always been a well-written character in the Star Wars universe, so, you know, a whole book with him as the main character, you know, just really great, um, yeah. Also got a couple of the Star Wars Rebels books, of course, we've been discussing the show on the podcast so far, I've been really enjoying the show, and looking forward to getting some of the cast members on the podcast soon. Um, first of all, Ezra's Gamble, which is the book that stars Ezra Bridger and Bendy Hunter Bosk, um, of course, some of you Star Wars fans will have noticed that on the cover, of course, Ezra is his Rebels design, well, he's only in Rebels, he hasn't been anything else Star Wars, but the Bosk is actually his Clone Wars design, uh, which is pretty bizarre, you know, when you can compare the two, because obviously the animation is considerably different between the two shows, you know, it's weird seeing Ezra with the Rebels animation, Bosk with the Clone Wars animation, it's pretty weird, um, the other Rebels book I got was Star Wars Rebels, Servants of the Empire, Edge of the Galaxy. Now, I know this is going to be a book series, um, starring Zaya Leonis, who appeared in the Rebels episode, Breaking Ranks. Um, I'm not sure how many books are coming in this series, but I know that there's more than one. I think, um, if I wanted to have a guess, I would say around four, but I could be wrong. Um, yeah, Zaya Leonis is the main character of them, and... I'm pretty sure that that first book is actually prior to the events of Breaking Rank, so it should be an interesting read. One of the other books I got, uh, Star Wars, it's actually a Legends book, and now it even has the Legends banner, is Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, written by John Jackson Miller, the author of A New Dawn, one of the new can canon books, who we interviewed on the podcast a couple of months ago, and, um, you know, as you probably know Obi-Wan Kenobi is my all-time favorite Star Wars character so just had to get that book eventually and after talking to John I uh, had even more reason to get it and now I do so very happy with that even if it's Legends you know Obi-Wan Kenobi book just wins so much win right there and you know there's the rumors of the Obi-Wan Kenobi spin-off movie and then there's the rumor of the spin-off trilogy for Obi-Wan but you now if, if no matter what it is if they do an Obi-Wan movie, a trilogy, I hope they at least use some of the material from that book, because I'm sure it's pretty good. After talking to John, of course, I'm sure it's pretty good, considering he's a very good writer for Star Wars. The non-Star Wars books I've mentioned, The Walking Dead, Descent, another of our author interviews, Jay Bon and Zynga, who wrote the previous The Walking Dead novels, the Governor ones, and this is his first, you know, kind of in a standalone series, like, uh, with the governor wand, Robert Kirkman was still, basically, gave him most of the, uh, of the ideas that he used in the governor novels. And this one, he's kind of, you know, doing his own thing with approval from Robert, so it was pretty cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what ideas he came up with for Descent. And also got Hen... no, not Henderson's Boys, Chubb, Lone Wolf, big fan of the... Chubb series and Henderson's Boys, both from Robert McCamore, who's a really good author. I'm very happy to have this one, you know, it's the, se the fourth, I should say, in the second series of Chubb, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, also got, <laughs> and you know, I mean, obviously it's pretty important to get some clothes, right? But did get some geek ones, some nice Star Wars socks, and uh, at the end, some maybe not so nice ones. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. But I'm sure the other ones are wearable. Actually, I'm not even sure why Darth Vader is with pink, but uh, maybe that's Vader's fashion set when he's not serving as a leader of the Empire. I don't know. Uh, you actually have a better look at them, uh, kind of here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah. Nope, Vader did not wear pink. Don't talk about that special thing that was released a while ago with the... Darth Vader and the pink Darth Vader. Don't, don't even mention that. Seriously, don't. Um, also, Doctor Who socks. Classic series again. I have a few fourth Doctor Era ones. Um, red Dalek and White Dalek and Exterminate. I think the Red Dalek might be the Supreme one. Might be wrong. Um, 
and a couple of other assorted Star Wars gifts. Key covers, pretty nice, right? Yeah, I like them too. And <laughs> this one. And if you like the previous one, you're definitely going to love this. Yes, because this is what every Star Wars fanboy, maybe some of the fangirls too, were always thinking back then. I heard Princess Leia, or I loved Princess Leia, the loose translation. Yeah, I'm sure all you fanboys have had that moment as well. <laughs> yeah, but in all seriousness, you have had those moments before. Um, also, before I get on to what's behind me, because it won't fit on the grinder in front of me, um, you know, last year, around this time, I did show that my mum had gone out of her way to, you know, kind of print her logo on things, you know, she created like a podcast notebook, podcast envelopes, you know, for sticking cards in, you know, like Christmas cards, of course, um, I haven't used those, actually, um, yeah, she created a few, oh, mugs as well, mugs. Now, my creative mum has gone and made Everything Geek podcast pens. Which is pretty impressive, is it not? I like them. <laughs> I'm sure I'll enjoy writing in my Everything Geek Podcast notebook with my Everything Geek Podcast pens. Got two of them. Yep, so I'm pretty happy with those. Um, of course, it's good that I'm now doing these videos for my channel, because now people actually know when I reference the podcast. So, yeah, and... Moving on from those, got four t-shirts, four geek t-shirts I should say. Um, you know, one of the things uh, my mum has done before is actually, and this is how she made the podcast t-shirt as well, is she sometimes f uses logos and puts them on shirts on Vistaprint and always them out. It's actually pretty handy because it's cheaper than buying actual shirt, you know. Like for example, Star Wars Rebels, you know. Really wanted a Star Wars Rebel shirt for a while at Celebration Europe 2. They were selling them and I'm sure they've sold them elsewhere, but was I able to get one online for it? wasn't great. When it was better, they were sold out, so you know, I was just like, yeah, just don't really have to get an official one. <laughs> now, got can just get one like this off Vista Print, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think that Rebel's logo actually turned out really well on white. Well, it's pretty cool um, as well for this, and I'm gonna give it a shout out. Yeah, um, to one of our fans and my good friends, one of our loyal followers, Mathilde, who created a few logos for us. They'll be seen on our website when we put it up, and um, a few of them anyway. Uh, she, and I, m my mum printed some of the logos on t-shirts, so here's the Star Wars logo Mathilde did for us, which is very impressive. One of my favourites by far. Really, really nice. Um, yeah, secondly... Um, James Bond 007, I really like how the, how Mathilde did that logo as well with the bullet hole beside the 007 number. Very nice shirt. Uh, lastly, that's kind of coincidental because all three of the, uh, the shirts I've got were my first three favourite geek franchises, Star Wars, Harry Potter and James Bond. They're the franchises I've been fans of longest. Here's the Harry Potter one. Not quite as good as the other ones, but I think it's still pretty good as well. I'm not talking about the image, I mean. I mean how it turned out on the t-shirt, but they're all four really great. And as you know, I like posters, so my final um, final thing I got for Christmas in this whole video is another Star Wars poster. Of course, you've seen the couple ones I get before. Quite certainly while I love posters, I am not so good at you know, putting them back together, but this poster is pretty cool. It's a very nice Star Wars one. In my opinion, it kind of celebrates all six of the movies, of course, with more movies coming out. It's even better timing, you know. It's a pretty difficult one to unwrap, actually, but, you know, it's really great when you do. <laughs> um, there you go. I'm sure you can see that. Um, it's a very nice poster, like I said, you know, it's themed from all six of the movies in it. Considering getting actors from the movies and crew as well to sign this, well, I might just leave it blank because it does look pretty good as it is, actually, but, you know, it might make for some good autographs, you know, on it, you know, quite a lot. But, yeah, that's the poster, which I'll put together, put back, you know, later. Um, but, 
This was my part one of my Christmas haul. Hopefully I'll have part two up in the next few days before I go back to college. Um, but, you know, got some good stuff. You know, I'm happy. Uh, not much on the collectible side, but that's okay because everything else, you know, uh, makes up for that. Like I said, got some great stuff. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to start planning for 2015 for the podcast. So, 